It is now time for member statements. Member from Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I say enough is enough. Now, you may think that I'm referencing the Liberals' mismanagement in the financial world that has led to an S&P downgrade, or you may also think of a number of OPP investigations and scandals, but I am not. The fact of the matter is, I'm speaking about the seemingly growing disrespect and carelessness that we are witnessing on our roads. This past summer, Huron Bruce residents experienced too many needless, tragic, life-changing accidents on the road. I'm using my first statement of this session to appeal to Ontarians to slow down and share the road. I must admit, Speaker, that I became very angry when former neighbours of my parents lost their lives in a senseless accident because someone was rushing to pass a transport truck. I became angry when I learned of a favourite high school teacher was struck by a vehicle when training for a triathlon. And sadly, Speaker, there were more. And that's when I said, enough is enough. At AMO, I spoke to the member from Burlington about her share the road legislation, now known as Greg's Law, and I asked for her advice as to how to increase awareness. I have also spoke of sharing the road in my most recent householder. And today, I ask all the members in this house to work together with me to unite in sharing the message that driving is a privilege not to be taken for granted. Please, everyone, slow down and share the road. Further member statements, member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, in June, the NDP called on the Liberal government to give Ontarians input on its climate action plan, including their cap and trade program. The only way to move forward on a fair and effective climate change policy is to make it fundamentally transparent and open to public input. Climate change is already costing Ontarians hundreds of millions of dollars from extreme weather damage. The 2013 ice storm alone showed just how profound weather-related disruptions can be. A serious response to the challenge of climate change requires leadership by the government and public support, public trust. We ask before and we ask again that the whole climate change program, including cap and trade, be brought to the Legislature for a review by an all-party committee and proper public consultation when the plans are introduced. Ontario's New Democrats believe that climate change policy must deliver real, measurable reductions in carbon pollution and must be transparent, allowing everyone to see the costs, the benefits and the effects. We also believe that low-income and middle-class Ontarians who are already struggling to get by shouldn't bear an unfair burden in our response to climate change. Lacking those key elements, the Liberals' proposed climate action plan and carbon pricing cannot succeed. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today and talk about the event-filled summer we had in Halton. Now, it's no secret, Mr. Speaker, that the face of Halton is changing. We're one of the most rapidly growing regions in the entire country, and with this growth comes exciting new changes. Over the summer, I had the pleasure of attending a number of special community picnics that really showed what makes our region so great. The Italian-Canadian, Tamil, Hindu, Filipino and Muslim communities, among others, held family pic picnics all through the summer. Mr. Speaker, it was a pleasure to get out and experience these special cultural celebrations and to see and taste all that Halton has to offer. And Halton has a lot to offer, everything from samosas and spring rolls to fantastic pizza and barbecue chicken. And we had a great local talent, some great local talent too, Bhangra dancers, singers, dragon dancers, and so much more. Each one of these events had their own unique charm, but they all shared a common thread. They all demonstrated the strength of Halton's growing diversity. We have a rapidly growing and changing community, and Halton residents are welcoming others with open arms, sharing their traditions, their food, and their art. Diversity and acceptance are what makes Halton so special. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So the member, the member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, uh, fetal alcohol spectrum disorder awareness day is marked by the ninth day of the ninth month each year. FASD awareness reminds the world that during the nine months of pregnancy, women are to abstain from alcohol consumption. This important day was first celebrated in 1999. It is estimated that nine out of a thousand babies that are born in Canada, Canada suffer from fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. FASD Awareness Day 
reminds the world about the dangers of drinking during pregnancy. Across the globe, bells are rung at 9.09 a.m. throughout every time zone. Back home in my constituency of Elgin, Middlesex, London, in St. Thomas, we have started our own awareness. Demonstration that occurs every year at City Hall is celebrated this past year, its 10th anniversary, and has been led by a great constituent of mine, Ethel Dilla Bonaterre. I want to take this opportunity to thank Ethel and all the dedicated volunteers in my ride and across this province for their efforts to raise awareness of this important issue. We need this government to officially recognize the prevalence of FASD so that these individuals are no longer neglected by our health and education system. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Beverly Goldmore. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to raise awareness on the plight of Bapu Surit Singh Khalsa. He's an 82-year-old man who has now entered 243 days of a peaceful hunger strike. He's protesting the unfair treatment of minority communities being detained as political prisoners in India. He is raising awareness on their plights that are being treated disproportionately unfairly compared to other prisoners. These prisoners have spent considerable time in custody and are eligible to be released under government discretion, however, are being denied this release. On February 26, 2015, Bapu Surit Singh was arrested along with his son, Ravindrajit, simply for engaging in this peaceful protest to raise awareness of the plight of political prisoners. I call on the international community to stand in solidarity with political prisoners across the world to ensure that they are treated with the dignity, respect, and justice that they deserve. Thank you. Member from uh, member statements, the member from Mississauga Streetsville. Well, thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, the Premier and members of this legislature joined with the GTA's Mexican community to raise the Mexican flag and celebrate the 205th anniversary of Mexican independence on the lawn of the Ontario Legislature. Ontario is home to more than 30,000 people of Mexican origin. They're an educated and growing community devoted to building a prosperous Ontario. Mexico's Consul General Maurizio Toussaint has worked with the province to develop many shared opportunities Mexico and Ontario have together as NAFTA partners. The Premier has pledged to visit Mexico. Mexico is, of course, a tourism and vacation destination of choice for sun-starved Ontario residents during our long, cold and grey winter months. Equally importantly, Ontario firms in Mexico are building and expanding that nation's industrial and transportation infrastructure. Ontario's high-value and high-skill businesses specializing in planning, engineering, finance, consulting, construction and manufacturing are helping build challenging and rewarding careers in both Ontario and Mexico as Mexico builds modern cities, airports, roads and civil infrastructure. Mexico and Ontario have an opportunity to bring Ontario's expertise in electricity generation and transmission to Mexico. Working together, Mexico and Ontario can reduce Mexico's carbon footprint in energy generation and transmission. We can expand and diversify electricity generation and transmission and bring clean, green, sustainable electricity to Mexico's 124 million people. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you for the member statement. The member from Leeds, Greenville. Well, thanks uh, very much, Speaker. On behalf of uh, the leader of the Ontario Progressive Conservative Party, Patrick Brown, and all of our caucus members, uh, I want to, as well as the honourable member uh, prior, uh, want to extend my warmest congratulations to all Mexican Canadians celebrating uh, Mexico's 205th Independence Day today. I'd also like to join with all members in uh, thanking the Consul General of Mexico in Toronto, Maurizio Toussaint, for organizing the wonderful event that we had both in the lawn and, uh, and in this building as a reception. On September 15, 1810, Miguel Hidalgo uh, made the cry for Mexico's independence in the town of Dolores. The cry of Dolores is what helped to initiate the movements for Mexico's independence, which culminated in Mexico officially achieving its independence in 1825. Today we are here to celebrate the 205th year of the cry of Dolores, also known as El Grito de Dolores. Ontarians of Mexican descent have left uh, and continue to leave a historic mark in the province of Ontario. Your welcome contributions span communities across Ontario and are reflected in our economic, political, social and cultural life, for which I think all members would extend their thanks. Uh, on behalf of uh, my leader, I look forward to working with your community in the years to come uh, as we move towards our shared journey to build a better Ontario. Gracias and have a great independence.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, students and families in Ottawa South and all over our province headed back to school earlier this month. And I can still remember uh, the hope and excitement in our household when our three children were younger, and it was always a very busy time. Mr. Speaker, I would like to take the opportunity to remind parents of the importance of having their children's vision tested. In Ontario, routine eye examinations for ch children younger than 20 provided by an optometrist or a physician are covered by OHIP. We know that 80% of learning is visual, and vision, pro vision problems create obstacles for children to achieve their full learning potential. One in six children has a vision problem, yet most children do not get an eye examination before the age of five. Since vision plays an essential part in the child's ability to learn, excellent sight and eye health are critical in their development. I encourage all parents to have their children's vision tested so they can be confident and fully able learners. Mr. Speaker, I would also like to encourage all of my colleagues to use their householders and other communications to share this important information with families in their writings. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member, students, the member from Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to extend my best wishes to all the Guatemalans, Salvadorians, Hondurans, Nicaraguans, Costa Ricans and Chileans as they get set for their Independence Day celebrations. Our province is so fortunate that many of our neighbours from Central America and Chile have called Ontario home for a number of decades now. I'm privileged to represent the Great Riding of Davenport, which has such an active and engaged Central American and Chilean community, and I am truly humbled that I have the opportunity to recognize them here today in the House. It gives me great pride to know that my first private member's bill, which received royal assent on May 5th earlier this year, was to declare October Hispanic Heritage Month. For the first time this October, we as a province will recognize the important contributions that Guatemalan, Salvadorian, Honduran, Nicaraguan, Costa Rican, Chilean and all Hispanic and Latino Canadians have made and continue to make to our province's social, economic and multicultural fabric through Hispanic Heritage Month. Mr. Speaker, last week I attended Viva Mexico festivities in my riding of Davenport and told them about Hispanic Heritage Month. When I shared with them that next month would be about them, they were proud. Proud not only that Ontario was recognizing their contributions to Ontario, but proud to share in the spirit of diversity, multiculturalism and coexistence that personifies this great province of ours. Viva el Dia de la Dependencia. Gracias. I thank all members for their statements. I beg to inform the House.